Hello and welcome to Good Games Form Point, the show for younger gamers by gamers. I'm Bajo. And I'm Hex. And I am Darren. Obviously a far superior robotic system to that bucket of bolts, Clank. Ah, uh, Darren, the show has just started and you're already on the defensive about Ratchet and Clank Q-Force. <laughs> 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 Darren, I think it would have been way better as Ratchet and Darren. Oh, thanks, Hex. <laughs> yeah, that sounds great. We're also going to be ruling over a very colourful spinny globe in Ruse. Uh, Ruse? I believe it's pronounced Roos. <laughs> to be a godlike ruler of an entire planet. Crushing noobs underfoot and lasering anyone even mildly annoying. OK, Darren, I think you're getting a bit carried away. You better check yourself before you wreck yourself. Before I'm you going to go read yourself. the news. Check Don't wreck yourself. Check yourself. Check yourself. You wreck yourself. I, I, I have full crash and insurance. Thank you very much. Banjo here with the Spawn Point news from around the world. Actually, I've been working on a theme tune for the news. <clears throat> Bajo here with the Spawn Point News. The infamous landfill, which supposedly holds millions of unsold cartridges of E.T. the Extraterrestrial and Pac-Man for the Atari 2600, is going to be excavated. The awful games were supposedly crushed and buried under concrete after failing to sell and crippling the video game industry. Now Canadian-based filmmaker Fuel Industries has been granted a six-month permit to excavate the site as part of a documentary based on the incident. And finally, Darren may have created the impressive Pooper Noob, but this Ghostbusters-inspired Minecraft roller coaster puts even that to shame. During the seven-minute-long ride, the coaster visits many major scenes from the films, as well as recreations of iconic items and characters. To make it even more impressive, the ride was made using only the standard Xbox 360 version. The creator, known as Neuropsych One, plans on releasing the map for download in the near future. And that's the news for this week. How about this for a game? Ratchet and Darren and Hex, and we could all have hover boots. Oh, I've got to. Oh. <laughs> well, now it's time to play as a god as we take a look at Roos. As each game of Roos starts, you find yourself god of a barren and lifeless planet. But with the help of four elemental giants, you can bring life to the world by creating oceans, planting forests and swamps, or raising mountains and deserts. Your aim in each game is to create villages and try to reach certain goals known as developments before your giants fall back asleep. At first you only get 30 minutes before they nod off, and in that time you are free to try and achieve as many developments as you can. These usually involve reaching a certain level of prosperity, which is measured by how many resources they have access to. As you complete enough, you'll level up and unlock longer game modes, which allow your civilizations to progress even further. Roos is quite complicated. The main mechanic is that you order your giants to place resources like plants, animals and minerals, which generate food, wealth and technology. These will attract nomads to set up villages nearby. And then villages begin building great works. These require a specific amount of resources to be within the village's boundaries. But these boundaries are quite small, so using your space efficiently is the trick. To make the most out of your limited space, you'll need to fulfil specific symbiosis criteria for each resource. A symbiosis is based on the ancient Greek word for together, and it's used to describe two or more biological species interacting together for the benefit of both. For example, in real life, bees are in symbiosis with flowers. The bees eat the nectar from the flower, and in the process spread the flower's pollen to help it reproduce. <laughs> That's all very fascinating, Darren, especially the stuff about the bees, but can we get back to the review, please? Affirmative. By achieving symbiosis, resources gain significant buffs. So putting animals next to plants will boost the total amount of food they produce. However, that is often insufficient to reach your goals, so you'll then need to apply aspects to resources, allowing you to transmute them into more advanced specimens. Then once the great work is complete, the town will provide you with an ambassador who can ride one of the giants and unlock even more aspects and possible resources. It's quite a lot to get your head around, isn't it? Yeah, it felt unnecessarily complex to me. I didn't really have much fun, to be honest. I felt like I was playing with a spreadsheet. Yeah, not to mention you don't feel really any sense of attachment to these worlds because they're all just gone after the end of the game. There is a mode that allows you to simply play forever, but without the ability to actually achieve any developments, it feels a bit pointless. 
I did like how if a village grows too quickly, then it becomes greedy and starts wars with other villages. And then you have to send your giants in to wipe out the greedy village. Them. Yeah, I really wish those battles were a bigger focus of the game. Anyway, what are you giving it, Bajo? I couldn't quite get into the groove here, Hex, so I'm giving it five out of ten rubber chickens. I'm giving it six. Oh, I bumped into Ted Price earlier. <gasps> the creator of Ratchet and Clank? <gasps> Let's get him in here, Darren. We can interview him. It'll be awesome. Uh, well, as soon as he saw me, he insisted that I should be the one to interview him. So, Gary, roll the tape. And welcome to my segment, Darren Does Dells! <laughs> I killed the lights. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, now, our special guest today is Ted Price, the founder and head of Insomniac Games, the home of Ratchet and Clank! <laughs> oh, welcome to the show, Ted! Well, I, you know, it's great to be here. I, I haven't talked to a robot in a while. Now, before we begin, just a formality, I have to scan you for noobishness. Huh. Scanning! Scanning! <laughs> <laughs> You're noobite free. Excellent. <laughs> you you started Insomniac Games when you were just 23 years old. What was that like? Was it scary? No, it wasn't scary. It was actually a lot of fun because I love video games and I saw an opportunity to do something that I was truly passionate about. After all this time, what still inspires you? What new things keep inspiring you to make games? Uh, for me, I'm a gamer. So I love the idea of going on a new journey, experiencing a new story, trying something I haven't done in a game before. For me, that's what keeps me energized as both a gamer and a developer. Now, Ted, you understand that as a condition of coming on my show here today, you have to give me a world exclusive. Give me your world exclusive. World exclusive. Now, they're hard to come by. I've and I, I, they're only, there are not many things that people don't know about Insomniac, but there may be one thing that you don't know. Oh. So I'm sure, are you familiar with a character of ours named Clank? Affirmative. Clank. Well, Clank started as three robots, not one. Three little tiny robots who would cling to various appendages of, of ratchets. And we spent a lot of time thinking that was gonna be really cool. And then we realized that just didn't work. We needed somebody with a little bit more personality. Something. Oh, affirmative, affirmative. Yeah, we wanted to make a slightly bigger robot and somebody who might look, well, almost like you. <clears throat> now, Ted, how old were you when you first decided that you wanted to make games? I was about nine. <gasps> Yeah, and my dad, my dad brought home an Apple II, an old computer, and I told my dad that if he brought home a computer, I would make games and make a lot of money. Uh, but it really wasn't about that. It was more about the opportunity to create something. And having a computer where I could program in basic and, and learn a simple language was just, uh, it was like a, a door opening for me. What advice would you give to any of the Spawnlings watching now who want to make games themselves? My advice would be to, first of all, decide what interests you the most about making games. Do you like to program? Do you love to draw? Do you love to think about stories? And start learning more about that. And then never stop learning. Continue to try, make, try out different game ideas, get your friends to play them, work with your friends to come up with cool stories and try to make them come to life on the computer because you can. Well, thank you, Ted Price, for joining us today. <laughs> um, would you like me to teleport you back to America? Is it gonna hurt? A little bit. Charging my teleporter! <laughs> and he's gone. Well, no, I'm really sorry about that, Ted. Other people have found that if you keep it raised, then the swelling goes down much faster. Right, uh, well, let's get on with answering some questions, shall we? Uh, first up, we have this one, uh, which is from Mr. Ahadu12, uh, who is in Xbox Land in Australia. Hex, Hex, my laptop doesn't work anymore. It's broken. It's because you pulled the ah! 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 Another one. Ah! Ah! It's a new laptop sound. Ah! Let's hear yours. <laughs> Yours isn't as good as mine. Hi, Bajo and Hex. Do you know what the new thing on Xbox One that is called Ignite? And will some games come out for Xbox One work with Xbox 360? P.S. Bajo is Cal, so is Hex. Darren is not a noob, but not the best and cannot sing. P.P.S. Try to make these sound, Hex. Yeah. Uh. Ah. <laughs> 
And Bajo, do these. <laughs> Bye and YOLO! Hex, look, isn't it great? My new laptop? Oh, it's got a nice keyboard. All right, well, we don't want to see that keyboard ending up like this one, which is Sorry just that. terrible. It's just wear and tear, just wear and tear. Well, Mr. Ahadu 12, Ignite isn't anything special to the Xbox One. It's actually just what Electronic Arts has named the engine that they're using to create their new generation of sports games like FIFA and Madden. So it's going to be used for the PS4 versions as well. As for Xbox One games and if they'll work on the 360, no, they won't. The physical hardware of this new console is so different from the old one that the Xbox One isn't even backwards compatible with 360 games, let alone the 360 being forwards compatible. They're just totally different machines. Yes, in fact, I don't think there's ever been a console that was forwards compatible with next-gen games. Hmm. Uh, I bet this is Darren, and I bet he's going to go on about something that I just said. Bajo speaking. Hello, Bajo. I could tell that over here you say no console has ever been forwards compatible. I was wrong. However, there actually was one. Really? You see, the original Game Boy was replaced by the Game Boy Color. However, some Game Boy Color games, such as Pokemon Gold and Silver, could in fact run on the original Game Boy, although without color, obviously. That's, that's, that's incredible, Darren. I completely forgot about that. Well, I, I guess that would count as limited forwards compatibility. It's limited. Yeah, but thank you for the reminder, Darren. Yeah. Thank oh, you for your... time, Bajo. Oh, 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 oh. Bye. Well, there you go. But other than that one example, forwards compatibility isn't that common. Wii U games don't work on a Wii, PS4 games won't work on a PS3, 3DS games won't work on a DS, and Xbox One games won't work on an Xbox 360. Although having said all that, there will be plenty of cross-generational games, I think, Hex, which will be available for both Xbox One and Xbox 360 at the same time to smooth over the transition. Hmm. Uh, but while we're still speaking of next-gen games, let's go to this one from a mystery viewer <laughs> who is somewhere in Queensland. I look him up with my new computer. Hey, good game, SP. Do you think that the next generation consoles is going to see a drop down in the graphics compared to PC? By the way, the power of PC doubles every eight months. Fat. <laughs> Well, mystery viewer, we already know that high-end PCs today are more powerful than the next generation of consoles, so console games will likely have slightly worse graphics compared to the PC versions running on good PCs. But that's pretty much always been the situation. Yeah, but one good thing is the new consoles will actually make many PC games look a whole lot better, and that's because developers tend to make games that run on the lowest common denominator of hardware. And for the last few years, that really has been the ageing Xbox 360 and PS3 consoles. Yeah, but the upcoming consoles will basically set a new baseline for graphics power in the next generation, which ultimately means graphics quality should jump up on PC games quite significantly. But anyway, let's move on to this one from Senji, who is actually in Kyoto, Japan. Oh, I can play those new games on my new computer. Yeah. If it... More importantly, we have fans in Japan, Bajo. Get it to boot up. In Japan. Oh, that's true. Konnichiwa. Dear Good Game Spawn Point, Right now, I'm in the middle of playing Pokemon Black 2 and I'm having trouble. Where can I find a Nokochi? Though I think it's called a Dunsparce on the English games. Anyway, even though I live in Japan, I love both of your shows. P.S. I think Darren would enjoy meeting your little monkey friend from the old good game. Oh, I remember seeing that monkey before I came on the show. He was kind of terrifying. What was yeah, his name again? he was scary. His name was Peanuts and he was actually on the show before I started working here. He, he wasn't very popular though. Psst. Gamers! Want to know how I beat Kapowski every time in Age of Vampires 3? Mm. Mm. Whatever happened to him? Well, the viewers demanded that he met a rather explosive demise. Red wire! Blue wire! Red wire! Blue wire! Red wire! Pink wire? That's new! Oh, that's right, poor old Peanuts. Uh, but anyway, first of all, Senji, your English is pretty much perfect, so don't worry about that. Uh, as for your question, uh, the Nokachi, or Dunsparce in the English version, can actually be found in quite a few places in Black 2. Uh, routes 1, 2 and 6, as well as Flockacy Ranch, just to name a few. But the tricky part is they only appear in special rustling grass. Yes, you probably notice that sometimes there will be a single square of tall grass shaking a little when none of the others are. If you run into the square, you'll encounter different Pokemon than what you would usually find in the area. 
you may have run into quite a lot of Ordinos because they're the most common Pokemon to find in those patches. But keep trying your luck in one of the locations that we've mentioned and eventually you'll run into a Dunsparce. They're quite hard to come by since rustling grass is already quite uncommon and in those rustling patches, Dunsparce don't appear that frequently either. We found it easiest in Flockacy Ranch, running up and down this little section until you spot some rustling grass. Well, good luck with it, Senji, and make sure you tell all your friends about our show. But on that note, let's go to this one from Donatello, uh, who is in Perth, Western Australia. Donatello is good with machines. Maybe he can fix my laptop. <laughs> Hey, Bajo and Hex, Mikey has been asking me to ask you to tell us if there is a LEGO Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game coming this year. Thanks. P.S. Darren is a noob. Ah! Well, sorry to say, Donatello, but there is no LEGO TMNT game in the works, as far as we know, at least. If we're very lucky, they might surprise us and announce one at E3, but we haven't heard any rumours to suggest that they will. Not to mention the team at Traveller's Tales are busy making LEGO Marvel superheroes right now, so we'd say it's pretty unlikely. But on the upside, you will be able to get a fix of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles action in just a few short weeks with the TMNT Out of Shadows game, and here's a quick peek at it. That's supposed to be out on June 26th to download from XBLA and PlayStation Network, and you can get it on PC as well. All right, well, time for just one more, I think. So let's go with this one from uh, On Barjo's Head, <laughs> which is on the floor hmm? in South Australia. How does that work? I don't know. If I was doing a handstand. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> Hi, GGSP. I'm a big fan of Xbox and the Kinect, and recently I have heard there is a new Kinect. And I wanted to know, do you still have the same amount of room to play as you did on the previous version? P.S. Hex rules! Bajo is awesome, and Darren is the king of noobs! <laughs> well, on Bajo's head, firstly, the new Kinect is only coming out for the new Xbox. Xbox One, so sadly you won't be able to simply replace the one you have for your 360. But from the sounds of it, it'll be much better than the current Kinect. Apparently it will give you more room to play and can actually work in smaller rooms, even tracking up to six people at once. Plus they say it can track more parts of your body with less lag and more accuracy. Yeah, I even heard that it can detect your heart rate just by looking at your face. I mean, that's pretty crazy. Yeah. I guess we'll have to wait and see if it actually works that yeah. well, though. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> uh, about that. We're out of time for this week, but if you've got a question you'd like to ask us, uh, then send it in here. High five, Hex, for a good session of questions. Yeah! Now, you know, I don't always say that I think your high fives are good, and they are good. You've been doing so well. Thank you. I got you this trophy. Oh, it's thank you. It's a high you. five trophy. Why is it so small? It's just because it's made of pure gold and obtainium. All right, Darren. Time for Ratchet and Clank. Huh. The Ratchet and Clank games have always been about outrageous weapons and cool third-person action, but in Q-Force they've mixed in tower defense. We didn't get a chance to review the PS3 version, but now that it's come out on the Vita, we thought we'd take a look at both. Hmm. The story revolves around Captain Quark. He's recruited both Ratchet and Clank into his own galactic hero squad called Q-Force. You know what this calls for? Don't say it. I'll tell you what this calls for. He's gonna say it. The Q-Force! He said it. Now, you might remember Quarks had a pretty shady past, flip-flopping between being Ratchet and Clank's part-time friend, part-time nemesis. In this game, he's firmly on the right side of the law, but he's just as lazy and self-centered as ever. And the galaxy? Well, the galaxy has never been so... boring. And unfortunately, one of Quark's biggest fans has gone rogue and is trying to take down Q-Force and the rest of the galaxy with them. Stewart, where are you? Your macaroni and cheese is getting cold. Mom, I'm in the middle of something. Sheesh. As they would say, it's time to die. To save the galaxy, you'll need to protect the Q-Force bases from waves of enemies. But the first thing you need to do is pick your character. Naturally, I chose Clank in his new power suit. Being able to blast around in jet boots right from the start of the game is a lot of fun. <laughs> He's so efficient. <laughs> yeah, those jet boots are a lifesaver, although I have to say they made platforming a little bit tricky. Normally you use your shadow to judge where you're going to land in the next platform, but the flames from your boots often meant that you couldn't. At least the shooting and combat has been handled well. 
Yes, and the weapons are as over the top as ever. Of course, you've got the plasma guns and rocket launchers, but Ratchet and Clank is still the only place you'll find burping alien shotguns, or a disco ball that forces your enemies to boogie before they're blasted. You are dead, and you are dead, and you are dead. Boogie, boogie, boogie. Oh, I was glad to see my weaponized robot pal, Mr. Zircon, return. He lifts the mood with his charming banter. <laughs> Mr. Zircon is looking to kill you. Yeah, the weapons really are the stars of the game. And I found myself really enjoying upgrading them. Unfortunately, the new tower defense sections aren't so great. If your base's generators are destroyed, then it's game over, so you need to build defenses to hold back the waves of enemies. The problem is you need to leave your base and collect bolts, which are used as in-game money to buy defences like turrets and walls. But you never have enough bolts to build more than a token amount of defences. Yes, the beauty of a good tower defence game is when you can build complex mazes and funnel enemies into a choke point and take them out that way, but in this one you can't even build the most basic of mazes. It's outrageous! All you can do is slow the enemies down a little by stacking defences around the base's two entrances. Yeah, and often a wave of enemies would hit when I'm right in the middle of a tricky platforming section. Ah. Sweet! A gold bolt! New enemies detected. So I had to drop what I was doing and then go back and defend it. The game feels inconsistent because you're constantly juggling between exploration and base defence. I did have a go of some co-op with Darren, and that should have been a cooperative experience. But it wasn't really, was it, Darren? Darren, you're meant to be looking after the base, and all these people are getting in, and it's, they're getting our generators. Do your job. Oh, the best defence is a good offence, Barjo. It's the job is to defend the things. That's what the thing is. It's tower defence, not tower, tower offence. Those crates aren't going to smash themselves, Barjo. <sighs> Darren, I just don't think you understand the concept of teamwork. Team, <laughs> team. <laughs> it's a shame the game doesn't support three-player co-op, so I could have joined in. I mean, the whole game focuses on a three-person Q-Force team, so it would have been really great to take advantage of the Vita to have a third person join in on the action. Yeah, and I was a little bit disappointed with the way the Vita version looked. It just... it, it should have looked a little bit better, I think, but it does look pretty good on PS3. Mm. Uh, at least the Vita and PS3 games support cloud saves, so you can save your campaign on one device and resume it on another. Yeah, normally that would have been great, but we finished the PS3 version in four hours, which was just one sitting, so there was no real need for that at all. Yeah, it was just as I was starting to get my weapons powered up into a really fun point and ended. It's such a shame to see a lightweight Ratchet and Clank game. Back in the PS2 days, they were right on top of their game, but I feel like in this generation of consoles, uh, it's just been a bit, I don't know, downhill. We should wrap this up, though. Final thoughts, guys? Well, that gimmicky tower defence really spoiled the core action gaming for me, so I can only give this a five. Yes, I like that they tried something different, but it was only a five for me as well. It's it's all Clank's fault, of course. Oh, really? he's, been, he's been so distracted lately with his film deal, and he's always mm. at the golf course. He's no. never in the office. Yeah. Well, that's all the time we have for this week, but we shall return next week. And we're going to have um, a look at the actually, latest... Actually, guys, I'm not going to be here. <laughs> what? Well, it's time for E3. You know the big gaming conference over in America? So I'm going over there because they're going to have all the new games and new consoles this year as well, and I'm going to get to play the consoles. <laughs> cool. oh, would you like me to fly you over there? Oh, um... That's fine. That's lovely of you to offer, Darren. But, uh, you know, Kerry has actually booked me a ticket on an actual aeroplane, so uh, he'd be really upset if I didn't use that. Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. affirmative. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, who's going to do the show with me? Oh, pick me, pick me, pick me, pick me! Uh, I'm already regretting this decision, but okay, Darren, as long as you promise to behave. Affirmative. <laughs> All right, well, have a great time, Hex. Oh, thanks. Uh, I'm going to go pack. Okay. Bye, Spawnlings. Bye. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Okay, Darren, ground rules. Rule one. Toast a sandwich on my chair at the start of the day. Affirmative. 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 Rule two. You're not allowed to talk when I'm talking. Affirmative. Affirmative. Say affirmative. Affirmative. Okay. Rule three. I need you to do my ham and I want it to be sculpted. Not just mashed up. It needs proper sculpting. Affirmative. Affirmative. Affirmative.